So hello everybody. Uh, as you all well know, deoxygenation in the oceans is one of the most important issues in oceanography today. Breitberg et al.'s recent review titled Declining Oxygen in Global and Coastal Waters is a call to action for researchers and policymakers to address the declining dissolved oxygen levels of our oceans. But to heed this call to action, we need to make, be able to make accurate three-dimensional models of dissolved oxygen levels. In this demo, I'm going to show you the first 3D geostatistical interpolation method developed by ESRI, called e Empirical Bayesian Krieging 3D, which I'll call EBK3D from here on out. Uh, the tool is still in active development, but it's going to ship in ArcGIS Pro 2.3, uh, and it's the first extension into 3D of our most popular and successful 2D interpolation method. So the data in the map, this data was provided by the World Ocean Database, and these represent points uh, where dissolved oxygen measured in micromoles per liter uh, was sampled. It doesn't look like very many points, but when I switch over to a scene view, you can see that there are actually many points along vertical columns. These points are symbolized by their dissolved oxygen levels, with red being highest and blue being lowest. And this base map is uh, Monterey Canyon in a 10 times vertical exaggeration. So it looks 10 times steeper and deeper than the canyon actually is. So our goal at the end of the day is to create a 3D prediction surface or a 3D prediction model that can interpolate dissolved oxygen everywhere within this region. But the first thing we want to do, we want to explore the data a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's create a histogram just to take a look at the distribution of these points. Let's go ahead and give it the field. So looking at the, the summary statistics, there were 809 points. The average measurement was 1.3, and they ranged from 0 .1, 0 0.14 up to 6.77. Looking at the distribution, it's heavily right skewed, with most of the largest oxygen measurements being at the surface, and the lower ones actually tending to be sort of in the middle of these vertical columns. If I use a logarithmic transformation, we can see that actually stabilizes the distribution quite nicely. It's not perfectly bell-shaped, but it's a lot better than it was. So that's a good thing to note, that a logarithmic transformation will be nice. So we'll go ahead and close the histogram, clear our selection, and let's jump right into interpolation. So I'm going to use the empirical Bayesian Krieging 3D tool. It's licensed under the Geostatistical Analyst extension, so it's in the Geostatistical Analyst toolbox in the interpolation tool set, and it's this tool right here. So it has a fair number of parameters that will show, but obviously you need to give the points. I've called those oxygen points. The elevation of the points will just come from the geometry, shape.z. The value, we want to interpolate the oxygen field. I'm going to give this output a little bit nicer name, oxygen prediction. And that's actually all that's required in order to run the tool. I could press run right now and I would get a result. But let's take a look at some of the more advanced options that we have available. So under advanced model parameters, you have control over the semivariogram model. I know from experimentation that exponential happens to work well for this data, so I'll choose it. For the transformation, again, we know a logarithmic transformation was useful, so I will choose log empirical. Now, these next three parameters, they are very critical for how EBK works, both 2D and 3D. The reason it's so accurate is that it's able to actually estimate local effects much better than other, other Krieging models that tend to be created globally. And the way it does that is actually building models on small subsets of the data, uh, building local models and then merging them together. So I just want to do a quick visualization of what these subsets actually look like for this data. It's a little easier to see if I turn off the base map. So this is how EBK actually partitions this data into subsets, just little convex holes around. So as you can see, it's a pretty reasonable partitioning. And again, this is where all of the local estimation is going to be done. So you have control in the tool over how many points will be in each subset, how much the subsets will overlap each other, and then how many local models will be simulated in each of those subsets. So these next two parameters, these are actually unique to 3D interpolation, and, and they're, they're designed to solve one of the hardest aspects of interpolation in 3D, and that's that the data tends to change much more rapidly vertically than it does horizontally, and that causes big problems for a lot of interpolation algorithms. So if you look at the data, the oxygen is relatively constant along the same elevation, but it drops rapidly uh, as the elevation decreases, and then actually comes back up a little again. So not only is it changing rapidly, it's also changing very consistently. 
it starts high, then it gets low, and then it comes back up, gets high, or comes back up to medium. So we would call that a trend in geostatistics. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take care of that general consistent change from high to low back to medium with a first order or linear trend removal. The second parameter I want to use is called the elevation inflation factor. Now, it's, it's just a number, but what it's trying to do is it's trying to equate one distance unit horizontally with one distance unit vertically. Meaning, for example, let's say the data change changes 10 times faster vertically than it does horizontally. Then this number should be 10, and it will account for that. Um, if you happen to know the value for your data, you can just go ahead and type it. But generally speaking, you won't have any idea what it is. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and run the tool, and as you'll see, it will estimate a value at runtime and print it as a geoprocessing message. So this takes about 10 seconds to run. Um, with 809 points, I'd say that's a pretty reasonable runtime. So for this data, it estimated an elevation inflation factor of 12.7, meaning it's changing about 13 times faster vertically than it is horizontally. Now let me quickly just change the vertical exaggeration so this layer plots in the right place. And I want to give it a little bit nicer symbology so we can see a little bit better what's going on. I'm just going to give it equal intervals with a large number of classes. So that's looking pretty nice now. So as you can see, this 3D model is going to render itself as a 2D transect at a given elevation. You can change the elevation with the range slider, and the layer will, uh, will re-render itself at the new elevation. So let me just do a quick little animation to show this as it's going to drill down. So watch. At the surface, the uh, oxygen measurements are the highest. They start to drop pretty rapidly. And when we get down to a little bit below here, they're going to bottom out and then start coming back up again. And isn't that beautiful how the layer just goes underneath the base map like that? I was so floored the first time I saw this. I, I loved it. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll let it get to the bottom. Okay. So we'll pull it back up to the top so we can really see it at the surface. Oh, I love that animation. So if I turn off the base map for just a second, it was a little bit hard to see, but you can see there's actually a 3D bounding box showing you the extent that you can move the layer. And one other thing I want to show you with geostatistical layers. Um, this is, so if I go into the Appearance tab on this geostatistical layer, I can change its display type to what's called Standard Error. Now, this is the big value uh, with Krieging, as opposed to something simplistic like inverse distance weighting or, or pairwise interpolation, is that Krieging is actually able to estimate uh, uncertainties associated with its prediction. So this is a visualization of essentially how confident it is in the predicted value at a location. And as you might expect, the further you are from the data, the higher the standard errors. So this is something that's really important for science because it allows you to create standard errors, investigate best and worst case scenarios, and uh, stuff you just can't do with more simplistic interpolation methods. So we've now done this interpolation. The result certainly looks pretty, but is it actually any good? Does it predict dissolved oxygen quite effectively? We'll use something called cross-validation to investigate that. So geostatistical layers have the ability to visualize cross-validation automatically in their right-click menu. And within this pop-up, you're going to get a lot of information. And if I had a couple hours, I could explain every single thing that all of this means. But unfortunately, i got to be quick. So all of these graphs tell something different, essentially, how the, about how the model is validating. But I want to focus on the root mean square error, which is 0 0.26, which sort of means that, on average, it seems to be off by about a quarter of a micromole per per liter on average, when it's going to make a prediction. That's about the average that it's going to be off. And also make a quick note of this thing called the average continuous rank probability score of 0.08. Both of those diagnostics, they should be as close to zero as possible. The smaller they are, the more accurate the prediction. So we'll go ahead and make a note of that. So having spent some time and scrutinized all those diagnostics, I know that this model predicts very well. Um, but we did use some advanced options. I detrended in Z. I used a transformation, a non-default semivariogram. How much of the quality of that model is due to just that I used advanced parameters? Could I have done just as well if I just hit run right at the beginning without even expanding any of those other sections? To investigate that, I'm going to use the geostatistical wizard. So you launch the geostatistical wizard in the analysis ribbon tab. It's this button over here. 
And what the geostatistical wizard is, is it's a guided step-by-step -step model building environment that supports all of the interpolation methods in geostatistical analyst. Notice these two methods based on EBK, those are actually 2D methods, but today we're gonna use uh, EBK 3D. And you provide the data set on the right, let's just give our field. When I click next, it'll take a few seconds to calculate the model, but you'll see up here on the right, I actually have control over all of the parameters of EBK. There's the subset size, the elevation inflation factor, et cetera. And on the left, I have a preview surface that will respond to these parameters. I could change them, uh, change them live and the surface would update, as well as an elevation slider so that I can uh, investigate the dissolved oxygen at different elevations. But another thing that's cool down here, this, even though you might not know what this is, this is why EBK is so powerful. Look how when I click in different locations and change the elevation, these are all of the local simulated models that are basically just configuring themselves to be whatever they need to be at that location. So this, that ability of EBK to morph itself locally is why it's so powerful. And this is the best visualization of that. So I'll go ahead and I'll click next. And this brings us back, this is uh, the cross-validation page. It's identical to the, to the pop-up that you saw earlier, except it's integrated into the wizard. Uh, two things quick to notice, the root mean square actually is 18% higher in the default model, and the average CRPS is actually 37% higher. So while you wouldn't have been able to tell this just looking at the surfaces in the map, by digging into the numbers, it's clear that we, that we substantially improved the model by using those advanced options. So at this point, I could click finish and it would make, make another layer in my map. Instead, I'm just gonna close the wizard because I know that this layer is superior to the one we would have gotten there. So at this point, let's recap where we are. We explored the data, we interpolated the data, and then we validated the results. So are we done? Not quite. So geostatistical layers, as beautiful as they are, and the ability to explore cross-validation, et cetera, is awesome, but you need to be able to export them to more convenient formats to be able to do more post hoc analysis. So you can export both as contour features and as rasters, uh, the, the slice at any, at any elevation. So if you right-click the geostatistical layer, in the export layer options, you're gonna see three different options. So if I go to contours, let's, it opens up the GA layer to contour tool, and I can type negative 100 for my output elevation. And when I run this tool, it's gonna create a polygon feature class. Let me set the vertical exaggeration a polygon feature class of the contours at depth 100. So I can click and you can see this is actually just polygon, even though it looks identical to that surface. And again, you could use Python or batch geoprocessing to export numerous uh, contours. And you could do the same thing with rasters, but the last thing, last export I wanna show you is the ability to predict the target points in 3D, because this is really cool. So. These are some points that I just made. They're just gridded points, nothing but geometry. They're gonna serve as a targets for predictions. So I'm gonna, again, let's turn those off. Go ahead, right click my model, my, my 3D model, export layer, this time to points. I wanna give my target points to predict to. And again, I'm not actually gonna run this tool because it takes a little while to set up the symbology, but if I ran it as is and uh, set the symbology of the output to the same as the geostatistical layer, this is what you would get. So these are the points symbolized by their predicted dissolved oxygen level all the way through. And for ArcGIS Pro 2.3, uh, this is the only way to actually see the full 3D model simultaneously. In the future, we're thinking about lots of other different ways of trying to see the whole model rather than slice by slice, but for now, this is the best way to do it. So. And with that, this completes the demo of using empirical Bayesian Krieging 3D to interpolate dissolved oxygen measurements in Monterey Bay, California. We really hope that you'll take this methodology and use it all over the world. Deoxygenation is one of the, in the, of the oceans is a problem that isn't gonna go away on its own, and we hope that you'll find this workflow useful in, in the ongoing fight to save the oceans. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>